Let's go out to Memphis, Tennessee, right down the road from me and talk to Lexi. What's up, Lexi? Hi, Dr. John. What's How are up? you today? I'm partying. What's up? Oh, man. I'm really excited to talk to you. I'm one of the original 17 who's been listening since episode one. So. Yes. Way to go. I'm so happy that you are still with us. I think we're down to 12, yeah. but I'm glad you're still here. Yeah. Well, I'm super excited to be here. Um, I have hopefully a uh, little bit chill question for you today. <laughs> <laughs> we, this episode desperately needs a chill question. Hey, can you uh, make sure you talk directly into your phone, okay? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Yes. Okay. So my question today is how can I help support my partner, my husband, who is struggling with ADHD um, and also get the support and help that I need to? Are you my wife? <laughs> I thought you might say that. <laughs> Um, no, but she always threatens to call the show and be like, Hey, uh, I love a guy who has a marriage show, but how do I get him to take the trash out? So, yeah, I, I thought you might say something like that based on, you so, know, listening for a while. What is ADHD? Um, how does it manifest in your house? What are you, what are you tired of? Um, so my husband is awesome. He's creative and fun and a really good dad. Um, but he does tend to be forgetful, um, of things or just easily distracted or overwhelmed. Um, and I know you always say to lead with this. We have a 10 month old baby. Okay. And so some of the things in the past that I've been able to catch, um, I can't because I'm also managing a baby. Um, and it's, it's little things that add up to big things, you know, like, Hey, you know, we both work full time outside of the home. And we've got a division of these are the things he's in charge of. These are the things I'm in charge of. And some of them he does really great. But then the trash only gets to the curb like once a month. Um, and that's a little thing, you know, but it does add up over time where I end up feeling like I have to be on like, hey, did this get done? Did this get done? Did get this get done? Oh, um, gosh, it's it, happening. It's, it's happening. I can tell. You know, you know what I'm about to say, right? Um, maybe <laughs> you are becoming the mother of two, right? And I don't want that. I desperately don't want that. But and you are, you are. Yeah. And so, how do you, how do you know he has ADHD? Um. So he was diagnosed as a kid, and then he had an evaluation as an adult, where he was diagnosed. Um, I actually didn't find out he had ADHD until. We had been married for more than a year because he forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Listen, yeah. if you Google ADHD, my picture comes up. <laughs> we don't forget. We just think yeah. that this time it will be it will be different. Yeah, and honestly, it hasn't been as much of an issue in the past as it is now. And he straight up said, "Like I'm struggling with it right now." Right. Correct. You know, our life is more chaotic. We have a small baby. Yes. We became homeowners. Our house needs work. Like, I understand why it, it's flared up now, but I don't want to be a mom of two. I want to be a supportive partner that also um, doesn't become resentful. Okay. So, you know this. I'm just going to run through this for the audience. Grown men, myself included, with mm -hmm. ADD, ADHD, act like children a lot. Um. And the women in our lives become, they act like our moms. And then when people with ADHD feel controlled, they have one response and that's explode. They lash out or they run away, right? Like a child does, right? And no mom wants to sleep with her son and vice versa. So you get in this weird trap of the only thing that helps ADHD is connection. And the only thing that begins to slowly, nobody wants to sleep with a guy that not know what time it is. Or, hey, let's have sex at 8 o'clock tonight, and it's 8.45, and he's just getting into the shower. Like, whatever, right? You, you, you know that <laughs> whole loop. Uh -huh. um, and what's, what's my joke? Like, I will get in the shower at 7.58 and um, for an 8 o'clock meeting that is 30 minutes away from my house, and I'll get out of the shower at 8.15 and be pissed that I'm late. Like, like it just happened, uh -huh. right? Oh, geez. Um, okay, so a couple of... For, for just the general audience, poor self-regulation, um, extra sensitivity to environment, to um, psychology, to nutrition, these kind of things. Time, my wife calls it my magic time. Mm -hmm. Just magic time. 
Just like, oh yeah, I'll get those, uh, the, the trash and I'll get in a second. And a second is, it's about a 30 day buffer of the second, right? Mm-hmm. It's between now and October. It'll, it'll get done. And here's the other thing that's annoying. It usually gets done. Just mm-hmm. not in the picture that the, you, you guys, you guys agreed on, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, the, the handicapped parking spot. It, it's just a second. I'll just pull right in there. It's just a second. Like the, the rules apply to everybody except for me. Right. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> okay, so, exactly. Yeah, they apply to, to everybody but me, except when they apply to me. All right, here's the path forward, and let me tell you this: the encouragement side is on the other side of this. Um, I've made some extraordinary headway. Headway. No medication. Just I've, I've made some extraordinary headway. Okay. Are you ready for what I'm going to say? I am. You're not going to like it. Okay. I know. <laughs> the first thing and most important thing is your husband has to want to change. Yeah. He has to want this to be different, not because you're nagging him, but he wants to have to, he has to choose a more peaceful life. And for somebody, an adult with ADHD, especially a successful adult with ADHD, it feels like you're giving up your superpower. It feels like if I'm not always a little bit late, a little bit by the seat of my pants, a little bit overprepared. I don't have that adrenaline push and it feels like I'm not my best self. And that's a, dis- it's, it's a lie. It's not true, but I have to feel like I'm letting, I, I'm setting the sword down a little bit. And that's scary. Yeah. And he's expressed that like, it's becoming frustrating to him. There like, we go. Okay. Looking, that's it. He's looking for resources. He told me, he was like, I was listening to this book about managing your ADHD as an adult. And the first thing they said was pay attention. And it made me want to throw the book. <laughs> the, listen, so. there's only one book to read. That's it. One book. And it's by Gabor Mate, M-A-T-E, and the book is called Scattered. That's okay. it. That's okay. a book you'll need to read together. It's a okay. very hard book to read because he traces ADHD all the way back to maternal stress. Yeah, and that honestly would make sense here. It, ADHD is a learned response, a body's response to chaos. And yes, yeah. there may be some genetic components. There may be some X and Ys and Zs. But it is a body's learned response to chaos. Gabor Mate does, Dr. Mate does a great job. He expresses attention like a traffic cop at an inter, a busy intersection. And the cars are coming, the cars are coming. And in a person with ADHD, the cars are all driving the same speed. It's just that the traffic cop is asleep on the grass. Mm. And you got to get, you got to decide, I'm going to wake this person up to direct traffic. Otherwise the traffic just gets all the decisions got to be made. Everything gets piled up and then you throw a 10 month old on top of that. And the normal marriage issues that come from having a 10 month old in the house and a new house and a mortgage and all that shit. But that traffic cop is like, dude, I'm taking four Xanax. I'm out. Right. You're just going to, I'm going to pass out on the, on the side of the road. Right. So yeah. you got to get that book. You can't be his mom. You got to be his wife. Yeah. And that means you all need to sit down together and choose your battles. Here's what I mean. Sometimes the fact that the dishwasher is, is, um, filled up and it's not filled up like you would do it. Those are two separate things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my wife and I pack different suitcases when we travel because the way I pack my suitcase makes my wife want to set her hair on fire just to feel pain, just to feel something. Mm -hmm. And she does it in such an orderly fashion. It's amazing when she opens it up. I, I've, I've watched her do it and I've tried to duplicate it. And it just, <laughs> I can't do it. But we both are going to get our bags packed and we're both going to go to the same vacation, have a great time. And she's learned to open her hands on this. Just The suitcase is going to look differently. And I've learned I've got to have my bag packed the night before because it makes my wife feel safe. Yeah, that I think is, part of the conversation that we need to keep having. Well, it needs to be written down in a very direct conversation because often moms talk to their kids in very circular manners. Mm-hmm. And so I want the language for you to be not things that annoy you. This is mm-hmm. what makes me feel safe. And this is what makes me feel loved. When you are on time, it makes me feel like you see me and you love me. Mm-hmm. When you are late, it makes me feel like you are disrespecting me and you, that your time is more valuable than my time. That was the conversation that changed my life. Yeah, that that sounds 
like it would be really helpful. And we started to have some of those conversations, but there, they can't think, be conversations because ADHD yeah. people f- experience emotions in a heightened sense. And the emotional regulation takes over and it becomes the greatest conversation we've ever had. And the sex afterwards is amazing. And then I forgot everything we talked about. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, crap, are you in my house? Yes, I am in your house. <laughs> so you got to write this down and you'll have to have a needs and wants dinner time. Make yeah. it a romantic date. And then he's going to have to learn to parent himself. What do I mean by that? Here's a couple of things that really impact ADHD in adult people. Chaos in the house. Lots of clutter. Lots of stuff. My wife likes knickknacks and stuff like that. She has conceded and she has been really gracious in getting rid of a lot of that stuff. And in some ways, in some parts of our house, it's almost minimalist. Other parts, it's pretty chaotic. Um, but in some parts, um, it's very minimalist. It's peaceful. And it allows a overstimulated brain to slow down a little bit. Okay. Also, eating right and exercise is huge for the adult with ADHD. Huge. I cannot miss a day. Period. And my whole team, everybody on the team knows now, if they walk by my desk or they come to ask me something and I'm eating a bag of gummy candy, they all just know, oh, well, he's off the, off the wagon. Mm-hmm. And there's a, there's a ripple effect. And so here's the sentence. You've probably heard me say this on the show before. Here's the sentence that my wife gives me. Here's the sentence I give myself. Don't forget to remember. That's just the gentle sentence she gives me. When, I'm, when I am coming away from a pizza buffet and I'm on round three and I've got them piled up really high, she will just gently put her skin on my skin. She'll touch her, my, her hand on my arm and she'll say, don't forget to remember how you're going to feel tomorrow morning. That's it. She doesn't say, oh my gosh, you're getting fatter. Are you seriously going to eat all that? She doesn't say any of that because I'm overly sensitive. I feel it really heavy when she says that. She just simply puts her hand on my arm and says, don't forget how you're going to feel tomorrow. And I always go, oh gosh, I'm going to feel terrible. And now I'm going to set this thing down. See what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And I think we've, in the past, we've been better with that. You know, having a new baby has definitely thrown things off. Mm -hmm. I think one thing relative to that, that I've struggled with is it's very all or nothing. It's either I have to be up at 5 a.m. every day to do my workout or I'm not going to get up any days. (laughs) <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. And as a partner for that, it's a little bit like, okay, what version of you are you this week? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I think you are my wife. I think you are. Let's see. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, I'll tell you another book that was revolutionary for me. And it is not a mental health book. And I told him, I told him to his face. Uh, the book Discipline Equals Freedom by Jocko Willing. Okay. It's written in gigantic font, like a, like a military field manual. You can read the whole book in an afternoon. But it's very, very clear. And it was the first book I ever read that basically said, you can live a life of misery and chaos forever, or you can begin to flatten out your life a little bit and do the same things over and over again, regardless of how you feel, regardless of how tired you think you are, all those things. Discipline is the path. And discipline has such a bad connotation, right? All it means is I don't care how I feel. I'm just going to get up at the same time every day. I don't care, quote unquote, how I feel. I'm going to do some sort of exercise downstairs, period. There is not a discussion about this. And again, for, for me, my wife has conceded on half the garage as a gym, a, yeah. big, a big, nice gym we spend a lot of money on. Because if I had to get in the car and drive, I, I missed a lot. Yeah, we're working on getting our home gym set up. Um, partly for that reason. Yeah, that's 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 that is him learning to parent himself, and mm-hmm. every parent has to parent their kid differently because every kid's different. The big thing is is you shifting from over him to with him. Mm-hmm. I'm with you on this, and if you're late and you get fired, I can't. I'm not. I'm not going to tell you you got to be at work. I'm not going to tell you that. You know, you got to be at work. You're an adult. And those are really, really hard. And being honest with him enough to say, I get really scared when you're late because I think you're going to get fired and then we're not going to have a house. Yeah, I think that that all makes sense. And 
but it's so hard. I know it's so hard. I know. It, no, it is, but it it's definitely one of the things where we try really hard, and I think we've done fairly well with this to to look at things of like the two of us versus a problem instead of us versus each other. And so, I think reading these books together and and you know talking through this is helpful because we had a conversation the other day where I was just like, look. I am realizing that you view the entire world differently than I do. Um, it's not and, a matter of view. It's a matter of experience. Mm, okay. Like it feels incredibly insulting to me to be mm. in a meeting. Like it, I feel it in my body when I'm in a meeting and I got to go. Cause I got another meeting. I feel wrong. It feels wrong to stand up and be like, Hey, I got to go. Let's finish this mm. conversation later. I feel mm. terrible. Like it, I can't describe it other than it hurts. Like, it's just like, gosh, what a jerk. Mm -hmm. So I stay 15 minutes later in the meeting mm -hmm. and I want to make sure we have the conversation. I'm honoring you with your time. I'm listening. I'm paying attention. And then we go to the next meeting. I'm 15 minutes late. And that person feels completely like I've wasted their day. Like, right. I've totally mm -hmm. ignored them and made them late. See what I'm saying? So I, it, it, it's a, not a matter of seeing the world differently. It's a matter of feeling the world differently. Okay. And what I have to feel is when you do this, it hurts my wife. When you do this, the kids feel like this. And I don't, I don't want to hurt my wife. I don't want to hurt my kids. And more importantly, now that I've had a taste of what peace feels like, I want that. And I literally don't see the plastic cups in my car, my coffee mugs in my car when I'm getting out. I don't see them. I'm, I'm too busy thinking about something else, like a song I used to sing in front of the mirror when I was in fourth grade. And, oh, yeah, remember that girl? And I wonder what happened to that girl because I thought I was going to marry her. I think she married my friend. You know what my friend did one time? He, and I'm off to the races. And as yeah. I'm getting out of my car, I remember, don't forget to remember how good it feels to get into a clean car. Mm -hmm. And I stop and then I look and I'm like, I need to get these 14 coffee mugs out of here. And then I bring him up and my wife used to be like, are you kidding me? You have freaking coffee mug. And now she goes, thank you for bringing these in. Mm -hmm. And it short circuits my, my shame spiral and it short circuits the whole thing. And it just, we can move on. And when I have seasons of bad ADHD, when I'm spinning, I'm just turning my wheels and I'm carrying a bag of donuts with me everywhere. I don't carry donuts, but uh, I'm over exaggerating, but w there's seasons when she knows. My wife graciously says, not, when are you going to get the trash out? Bob? That's not how she approaches me. She does approach me with, hey, some of the signs are pointing to you're not doing okay. How can I love you better right now? And then I usually drop my shoulders and say, I'm really tired or I'm really scared or I'm not going to hit this book deadline or whatever's coming up. And I, we have a conversation and we can talk and that usually resets me. Does that make sense? That makes sense. It does. It definitely does. And yeah. I think to like what I'm hearing and, and what I think is important is the answer is not just don't have needs and manage everything. The answer is continue to engage in the relationship and say, Hey, these are, these are the ways that, you know, this is impacting me and, and you're an adult. And so um, you're going to, choose different things or you're going to do what you do. And I'm here to support you in making good choices for yourself. And, um, ADHD is a context, not an excuse. And uh -huh. most of the time in my life, ADHD choices are not made in the moment. They're made 30 minutes or an hour or two hours or five hours before. Okay. My cell phone has to stay off and in my bag period. Otherwise I choose to pick it up and then I choose to yeah. scroll forever. And then I'm choosing to be late. And I didn't choose to be late. I just chose to check my Instagram stuff real quick. Yeah. So the choice to be on time is the choice to keep my bag, my phone in the bag. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So it's, it's just yeah. learning a new context. Um, you said something I want to touch on before, right before we leave. You said, I know it's not us. We're not fighting each other. We're fighting the problem. Uh -huh. I want to change that language with ADHD because he, that is part of him. Uh -huh. yeah. And if you end up fighting, we're just fighting the ADHD. <sighs> Whether you say we're going to be on the same side of the table or not, you're both fighting him. And he's going to start, have to, he's going to go to war with himself. He's going to declare a civil war on himself. And, and that's, that's what ADHD does. And nobody wins. 
I want the whole conversation to change to how do we have a peaceful home? And how do I best love you so that you can best love me? How do I help meet your needs so that you are fully able to help meet my needs? And that means you're going to have to be really explicit about what your needs are. And you probably have to spend some time with yourself. Because right now it just feels like, ah, if you just did diapers and just did dinner and just did this, then I would have, ah, that would work for a little bit. It'd feel good for a little bit. But there's going to be something different. I need you to plug in and be a part of this family. What are the things he needs to do to be fully plugged in? Sometimes that means leave the phone in the car. Sometimes that means don't open your laptop when we're talking. Sometimes that means um, Saturday mornings are exclusive. There is nothing planned on Saturday mornings because that's when we go on long walks and we talk together. You got to exercise. And in fact, I'm going to do morning time because you've got to get in the gym and exercise because that makes the whole day better. Whatever those things look like, we're going to create a life worth living together. We're going to create an amazing life with the ADHD, not in spite of it. And I'll say, I think it's my superpower. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I wish I'd learned to manage it a lot better earlier, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Thank you so much for the call, Alexi. He's lucky to have you. He's lucky to have you. Have fun on the adventure. Call me anytime. 